What's up everybody? Welcome to Bow Hunting Pressured White Tails. My name is Jake and in this episode I'm going to be talking about gear. Uh, don't mind my cold, a little bit. Got a little bit of stuffy nose still, but we're going to be going over kind of some stuff just in retrospect that worked for me last year and that didn't work for me last year. I'm going to be sharing some of the tweaks and hacks that I did to my gear. Some of you might be running a lot of the same stuff or might find something that I did that could help you out. That's the goal of this episode. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So let's start with clothes. And I, I don't have a whole lot of stuff for you. Um, only a couple items here. I want to share this with you because I feel like the quality of these two pieces of clothing is outstanding absolutely phenomenal and, the, and for the value how much they cost i think they're they perform way way above the money that you're putting out for them compared to a lot of this high-end stuff that's out there on the market now personally um i i've not like bought in wholeheartedly to any kind of like super high-end clothing hunting clothing brand personally what i like to do is just i've got a sweatshirt that i'll pack in uh, for when it starts to get real cold on those fall days or a jacket or something like that. And then I've got a pair of pants that I wear. And it's just kind of like a normal pair of pants. As you can see, these ones are green. Um, I'll just wear them when I'm hunting. I'll wear them all throughout the day. I don't have any kind of a scent system. So I just, I wear my clothes. And when I'm in the field, when I'm out of the field, it really cuts down on time for me. Let's talk about this pair of pants. Now, just as a backstory, I've been wearing Wrangler ATG pants for a very long time. They've been my go-to pair, um, mainly because, number one, they're very affordable. You can pick up a pair for under 40 bucks. Uh, number two, they're very comfortable. They're stretchy. Uh, they fit you no matter what you're wearing. If you've got thick um, base layers on, they fit. If you're wearing them to, as a cool outer garment, they fit. They don't rip. They don't tear it's made out of very very durable material it's kind of like yoga pants for men because they're just so freaking comfortable i pretty much wear Wrangler atgs 100 percent of the time until i found this pair this is a brand that i picked up from costco these are orvis pants i believe they're called like orvis men's tech pants or something like that so obviously you have to have Costco membership to buy these, but I picked these up for a measly $15, I believe. They outperformed the Wrangler ATGs by a long shot, and I don't know why. So this material um, is just phenomenal. Uh, it doesn't collect burrs, which the Wranglers did a pretty good job with burrs, but these absolutely phenomenal with burrs. If they do stick on, you can just barely brush your hand over them, burrs fall right off. So they're great with that. Um, and the other thing that kind of annoyed me about the Wrangler ATGs is that they did shrink a little bit on you in the wash and you had to wear them a couple times to get them to kind of stretch back out. So you kind of felt like a fatty when you first took your pants out of the dryer. Not the case with these. They don't really have that shrink factor on you. They're also a little bit more high-waisted than those Wranglers. I feel like the Wranglers always felt like they were falling off me. Not the case with these guys. Um, they just pretty much got two back pockets, you know, your uh, typical two front pockets, and they have one side pocket on the leg not a ton of space on as far as pockets go but i've been wearing the wrangler atgs and i've had two pockets at max if not just one pocket on the leg so i'm used to that i don't mind it at all i love 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 these pants if you ever get a chance to pick up a pair from costco do it like if it doesn't become your daily wear pant uh it'll probably become like maybe your favorite pair of hunting pants because that's what it's become for me Enough about the pants. Let's talk about this sweatshirt. And Habit Outdoors actually makes this sweatshirt, but they also Habit makes a lot of stuff for Realtree too. So I have a version of this in the Realtree Original. I have a version of this in the Realtree Edge. And essentially what this is, is this is a fleece Sherpa lined sweatshirt. Um, you know, obviously it has Sherpa on the inside, but then when you couple it, oops, when you couple it with the fleece, this is just an unbelievably warm sweatshirt. Warmest sweatshirt I have ever ever had period um and i believe i picked up the the real tree original one for like 40 bucks or something like that for how thick this is and how warm this is like this is the only layer i brought out with me during my entire week-long trip uh hunting november here in michigan this was the only thing i put on my backpack everything else was just you know thin base layer type stuff i pack in the sweatshirt and i was good to go for pretty much everything down to about 40 degrees it's got your standard kangaroo pocket, which is also lined with Sherpa. And 
the hood also lined with sure butt and then you've got a little elastic straps so it was really nice is you could bunch that up right around real tight to your face and that would keep the wind off your ears um and it was just super nice i love this thing that's the reason i bought another one so i've got two of them now but if you're like me and you don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on super expensive clothing lineups um, i will drop some money sometimes on clothes but man, you get some crazy good quality out of those two pieces. Um, this is a Trophy Line Predator pack. It's a fanny, fanny pack style backpack. So, you know, everything is down here on the back side of your waist. And then you got your straps up here. And I had a Predator pack kind of attached up here. And a lot of guys, some guys were asking me like how I got my Predator pack to attach up there. It's actually pretty easy. Predator pack comes with everything that you would need to attach get it to attach onto this pack i was a little skeptical of that for at first when i bought it as well but it attaches no problem and i have had no issues with it i did modify it a little bit though so as you can see up here i got these bungee looking things so essentially what i was running into with this pack is that everything is perfect um, i love it however all you got on the top is you have these two straps right here and that's the only um, packability aspect that you have for cinching things down and these work great but you can't put a whole lot on top and what i wanted to do is i put my stick on top um, and then i would cinch it down real tight with these straps and then i would also want to put my sweatshirt on top my sweatshirt is a little bit bigger form factor so these straps wouldn't really go over and do both now they do give you the option of straps on the bottom so I did kind of run that for a little bit and I put my stick on the bottom, just didn't like it, um, preferred the stick on top. So then I decided that I would get some bungee cord and I'd tie myself a little loop on the bottom and then I tied just a single bungee strip on top and then I got some cam jams and I put one on each of these bungee lines and I can just pretty much wrap it over my sweatshirt, clip it onto the bottom piece and then just cinch it up tight super super easy and now i can fit a lot of clothing layers on top of that backpack the next thing that worked very well for me was my gaiters and my knee pads and these gaiters are kenny trek k-e-n-e trek t-r-e-k that's the brand but essentially it's just a gator i did not think i would use these as much as i did but i i wear these every time i am doing any kind of serious hunting in the woods number one from wearing rubbers it protects that neoprene from getting all um cut up and stuff by briars so that's awesome uh number two it adds an extra layer of waterproof to the outside of your boot and a lot of times I'll tuck my boot, let my pant into my boot, and then I'll put these on. So this just keeps my boot from getting wet. And it also keeps the muck off of my boot when I go through a lot of deep mud and swamp type stuff. So instead of having to um, take a hose and clean your boot off, you just take these things off. And obviously these are flexible. So when you even with mud all caked up on them, once it dries, you can just give them a shake and the mud comes right off. So these things worked phenomenal. Knee pads, just a real basic set of knee pads. I just like having knee pads. I found that even on days that I'm not in a tree, knee pads come in handy because they help keep your, your legs a little bit warmer. And I found when you're stalking, man, it is nice to have knee pads on. So, uh, man, I find myself wearing these more times than not. There's two more things that worked very well for me this year. That is my 350 Legend. Don't mind this little piece of paper. That's just notes for me to remember any issues that I might have had with it, which I don't think there were any, but I just kind of do this to all my guns so I know where I start back up on next fall and where I left off. But I built this this year, worked phenomenal for me. Um, it has, oh gosh, I, don't, I think this is like a three to nine by 50 scope from Vortex. It's a straight wall reticle one. Um, took the biggest buck of my life with it this year. I think I took four other deer on top of that. But that gun by itself, even though it's super awesome, is complemented greatly by this trigger set, trigger stick. This is uh, a, the Primo's trigger stick, the double stick, and man, is this thing nice. And what I would do is I would get it fully extended. It extends out to about standing height, and I'd walk around with it like that. And I could just whip my gun up anywhere when I, um, as I'm hiking into the woods, and then I could adjust it down. Uh, really easy 
it was just super, super fast. And I think every single one of the deer that I shot with my gun, I was using this trigger stick and to be able to take pokes at deer, you know, 200 yards or so while you're standing just on a whim. Phenomenal. You got to have something like this. Uh, you really can't freehand that kind of stuff. And then lastly, the stuff that really worked well for me is just these little trail cams. And I'm not going to say these are the best working trail cameras. I've had issues with them. These are just the Spy Point Link Micros. The only reason that they worked really well for me is because they were very cheap. And I think I can pick these up for about 50 bucks a pop now. And for the amount of data that you can get from these things and the form factor with them being this small, like both the big bucks that we killed were because we got intel from these guys. So I really love them. I'm buying more of them. Uh, my brother's got all the reveal cams. I love those. I'm already invested into the spy point stuff. He's invested into the reveal stuff. Uh, so we both are kind of trying to add cameras to our arsenal, but... I did spray paint it. As you can see, this is how it, how it looks when you get it. And then I spray painted the whole thing. And that just cuts out on a pretty much extra black and stuff like that. And it adds a nice matte coat finish that doesn't reflect sun quite as bad. And this really makes them hard to spot once you get them out there. I guess something I didn't mention was I just made a little sling. Whoops. I made a little sling out of the strap for the tethered platform the predator platform i didn't use it i had a, a daisy daisy chain system so i just took it off and it's got a loop on one end you can just buy um you know little attachments it's just a one inch uh strap i believe and i use this as a sling for my bow this year and i also was able to use it as a sling for my gun but it was almost like a single point sling it was a little bit offset from single point on my gun and then on my bow, it, I mean, it worked just like those those paracord slings that you see people selling that have the magnet and stuff on there. Worked just like that. I just kind of wrapped it up around my stabilizer when I wasn't using it, get to keep it out of the way, and then I would unwrap it. And man, is it nice having that your extra hand freed up. So that's kind of the stuff that worked. Now let's talk about stuff that did not work because. Like everybody, you get to the end of the year, you look back and you're like, man, what was I thinking? Why was I doing something like this? Like I could have easily made a change to like make things so much easier. So I got a few things that fall into that category. The first one's super easy and that is just my headlamp. And I was running this really cheap Energizer headlamp. And I'm sure somebody's going to be like, man, you're so dumb. Why would you ever run something like that? I didn't know any better. I just picked it up at Walmart and I had all sorts of issues with this thing. It's it's not a bad light. Like it has a red light. It has different brightnesses. It has a flood. It has a beam. Um, but it runs on triple A's and the battery life was absolutely horrible on this. Second to that was the fact that this button would always get bumped. Uh, it's not recessed. It's very easy to hit and I would put it in my pack and it would always get bumped and then I would end up with a headlight that is dead. And when you're up in a tree, the last thing you want is a dead head lamp because it just means everything's going to take longer now. You got to get your phone out or whatever else. And even though I was carrying a second one as a backup, I was still frustrated with the performance. So I went ahead and bought this. This is a light from Nightcore, and I'll try to put a link in the description, but this thing is sick. And it has more of a minimal type headband which I didn't really care too much about that, but what I like about this is the functionality part of it. So you have a mode button and a power button. If you hold the mode button down, you get your red light and you can hold it, turn it off. Um, the power button, if you hold it down, uh, you can cycle through different brightnesses and it gets pretty dang bright. I think it's about 400 lumens. Hold it down, turns it off. But the best part about this light, in my opinion, not only does it have a built-in battery that is rechargeable with USB-C, but if you hit that mode button real quick one time, there is a battery power indicator bar on the top. And it will show you on a four dot basis how much battery that you have on this light. That's the sweet thing, because having an internal battery on a headlamp, it's cool and all, but you gotta keep track of it and you gotta know when you need to throw this thing back on the charger. Can't wait to use that this year. The other thing that just really annoyed me, and I kept thinking about it and I was like, man, I hate this system. And that is my gear strap uh, in the tree holding system. I think this is called the Versa Strap from Tethered. I'm pretty sure it's their um, pretty much like their daisy chain type 
uh, strap for going around the tree. I got a big carabiner on the one side for my backpack. The other side I have a little carabiner just to wrap it around and clip it. Um, and overall it worked fine. No, no real questions. Um, I've got a little loop made out of Kydex in my bow so that I can just kind of loop my bow onto here. So I don't need a whole lot of, uh, of stuff on it, but just the strap itself was pretty bulky. And if you bundle it up into your hand, you know, this is how big it is. And I did not like this. So I made a new one, bundle it up and it's this big. I can fit this in my pocket much, much easier than that that thing i had to put in my sweatshirt pocket and it would take up the whole space in my little kangaroo pouch or i'd have to do something else with it and i couldn't fit it in the side pocket of my pants because i got a nice little side pocket but my side pocket's not big enough for this big old bundle of stuff plus my phone or whatever's in there so i downsized to this so essentially on the one side i have all my daisy chains for hooking stuff up and i just made this myself and then i have a figure nine right here from night eyes if you don't know what this is i encourage you to go look up some videos on it but essentially what i do is i take this and i wrap it around the tree and then you kind of come around and then you can cinch up your paracord or your you know in this case am steel on this and it'll keep it crazy tight so you're not really hooking it up on any kinds of daisy chains you're actually cinching it on this figure nine and you're getting it super tight up against the tree on my tag end of this i have a little cam jam and that's where my backpack goes on that cam jam and then once i start tightening this cord i can adjust my backpack to whatever height i want super easy and then if i want to reset it i just pull it out pop backpack and slide down wherever i want it i think this is going to work sweet for me this year and i have not used it yet so i don't have any footage showing how it works but if you keep watching uh it's gonna be popping up in some videos for sure oh yeah let's talk about some saddle issue stuff and this one's kind of a really easy fix so this right here is my rappel rope it's all bundled up right here in this pouch comes out and it goes through this little prusik line that's attached to my saddle i have a little carabiner on the end so this is what I use to repel out of the tree with my one sticking setup, but it also is my lineman's belt. Um, if I need to unhook my tether as I'm climbing and then rehook it up to get above limbs and stuff like that. You know, I don't use uh, a ropeman on this side of things just because this is also my repelling system. Um, I've used other methods and I still prefer this system. So I know um, I'm not gonna change up any kind of hardware to make things different. This is what I like. But what I was finding is once you get this thing wrapped up around the tree, so you say you're around the tree, okay? Now to tighten it, I would have to grab the tag into my rope and I would actually have to use my fingers and push my brusic up to get it tight. And I'm just thinking, why the heck am I doing that? So it dawned on me that I can just attach a small, I don't know if you can see that. I can put a small little carabiner around the other side and use that as a tinder. So now when I get it around the tree and I want to tighten it, I can just grab the tag end, pull, that little carabiner right there will catch it and we'll just tighten it right up. So that's something most guys might look at and be like, well, that's kind of a dumb thing. But for me, that was a big thing. If you have any kind of a Prusik line, you can easily tinder that line and make things a heck of a lot easier for you. The other thing that kind of was an issue for me this year was my climbing stick. And as I unravel this, you're probably thinking, man, what kind of a dinosaur climbing stick do you got? This is my one of my OG climbing sticks that I use. This is just a Muddy Pro stick cut down to about probably 10 inches. And down here, I have Two Step Aider that I made myself out of Amsteel. And overall, this has been a great stick, and I've used it a whole lot. But this year, I've just noticed that um, the bite on these standoffs is not the greatest and then the shorter you cut down a stick the more crucial everything becomes because it's much easier for the stick to pop out from underneath of you and it just didn't want to bite to the tree because of it being shorter um, i'm going to be getting a new stick set up uh, it's probably about time i also kind of want to get a new aider um, as you can see i put like a little plastic rubber thing on the foot and then where you step on it and it's just kind of warped with heat and pressure and so it kind of grabs your foot as you try to take your foot out i'm sure all of you guys are running better sticks than me but this is literally what i've been running for a long time so 
I'm going to be upgrading that. Probably going to be getting a V-stick, cutting it down, making something very similar. So the last thing I can think about that just kind of annoyed me this past year was just not having a very good base layer system. Uh, I've been kind of just wearing my typical hunting outfit and then I'll bring some heavier weight stuff with me. But I'm realizing it's not the most efficient way to do things. Uh, it requires packing in more bulky objects. And this past fall... Um, I kind of, I had a pair of, uh, habit base layers that kind of like a midway and I wore it and I was like, man, this is really nice. And there's a couple days I was like, I could use, uh, some heavier stuff. And I just realized how nice having some base layers are, even if they're not, you know, crazy warm, it's so, so nice. And it keeps your, uh, everything tight to your body. You're not hauling around a whole bunch of bulky stuff. So I'm going to be looking around trying to find some heavier weight bulk. Um, base layers, maybe even uh, some more mid-weight stuff. I'm not really sure, but I really like having a super comfortable pair of base layers. So I know there's some stuff from Cabela's I'm going to be looking at. Um, I know First Light's got some pretty good stuff. Uh, not really afraid to drop some money on it because I know I'm going to be wearing underneath pretty much everything all the time. If you guys got any experience with any of that, let me know. But that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think, if there's any type of, you know, gear item that I went over that you're like, hey, I would like to see a little bit more about that. I'd love to make a video for you guys. Just let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you have not already. Hit that little bell. Um, algorithms will or will not show you stuff. And I got a video coming out pretty soon. My brother smashes a pretty nice Michigan buck. So I'm working on editing that right now. That'll be going up here in a minute. So, uh... Thanks you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you're all feeling good, not getting sick like me. <laughs> and I know we're all uh, in, in great anticipation for the springtime. I might get out and do some steelhead fishing with my buddy if he'll take me. Um, maybe some turkey hunting, shed hunting, uh, scouting, all, all that stuff. So a lot more co content coming your way, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.